book three, chapter 119. Let's close our eyes, sit in a comfortable meditation posture and become a silent witness. From this perspective of the silent witness, we will read and listen to the Yoga Vashishta. Illustration of the gold ring. Form versus substance. But she just said, the human soul reflecting on its sense of ego forgets its essence of the Supreme Soul. Just as gold ring, thinking on its round form, loses its thought of gold substance of which it is made. From said, please tell me sage, how can gold have consciousness of its form of a ring? Like a soul is conscious of its sense of ego. Which is to say, the consciousness of men relates only to their substance and not the production and dissolution of their forms. You should ask about the substance of the soul and gold and not of ego and brain. Which are unsubstantial nothings in nature. When the jeweler sells his gold ring for the price of gold, he undoubtedly delivers the gold, which is the substance of the ring. And not the ring without its substance. Ram asked, if such is the case, that you take the gold for the ring, then what becomes of the ring as we commonly take it to be? Explain this to me, so that thereby I may know the substance of Brahman. And the Shishta said, all form, O Ram, is formless and accidental quality without any essential property. So if you would ascertain the nature of a non-existence, then tell me the shape and qualities of a barren woman's son.
do not fall into the error of taking the roundness of a ring as an essential property of it. The form of a thing is only apparent and not prominent to sight. Water in a mirage, two moons in the sky, men's sense of ego, and the forms of things. Though appearing as real to sight and thought, cannot be proved as separate existences apart from their subjects. Again, the likeness of silver appears in oyster shells, but you cannot find even a particle of silver in the shell. An imprudent, imprudent view of a thing makes nothing appear as real. Like the appearance of silver in a shell or water in a mirage. The invalidity of a nothing appears falsely as an existent entity to sight. The fallacy of a thing as something where there is nothing of the kind sometimes an unreal shadow acts the part of a real substance such as the false apprehension of a ghost kills a lad from fear of being killed by it. After its form of jewelry is destroyed, there remains nothing in gold jewelry except gold. Therefore, the forms of the ring and bracelet are no more than drops of oil or water on a heap of sand. The forms are absorbed in the substance, just as fluids in the sand. There is nothing real or unreal on earth other than the false creations of our brain and these, whether known as real or unreal, are equally productive of their consequences, like the sights and fears of ghosts in children. A thing, whether it is so or not, proves itself as it is believed to be by different kinds and minds of men. Poison becomes as effective as an elixir to the sick and ambrosia proves as heinous as hemlock with the immoderate. Belief in only the essence of the soul constitutes true knowledge. Belief in individual 
soul and mind. As these are generally believed in this world. Is ignorance. Therefore. Abandon the thought. Of your faults. An unfounded sense of ego as individual existence. As there is no roundness of the rain inherent in gold, so there are no individual egos. in the all-pervading universal soul. There is nothing everlasting beside Brahman. And no personality of him as a Brahma Vishnu or any other. There is no substantive existence such as the world. Only Brahma's offspring called the patriarchs. There are no other worlds beside Brahma nor is there any heaven without him. Hills, demons, mind and body, all rest in that spirit, which is not any of these. He is no elementary principle, nor is he any material cause. He is none of the three times of past, present, and future, but all. He is not anything in being or not being. He is beyond your concepts of individual ego, selfhood, and selfishness and all your entities and non-entity. There is no attribution or peculiarity in he who is above all your ideas. He is none of the great personifications of your notions. He is the fullness of the world, supporting and moving all, being unmoved and unsupported by any. He is everlasting bliss without decay, having no name or symbol or cause of his own. He is no being that, that is born and existent, nor is he non-existent. He is neither the beginning, middle, or end of anything, but is all in all. He is unthinkable in mind and unutterable by speech. He is vacuum about the emptiness and a bliss above all joy.
Brahma said, now I understand that Brahma is the same in all things. Yet, I want to know, what is this creation that we see all about us? Vasista replied, the Supreme Spirit being perfectly tranquil and all things being situated in him. It is wrong to speak of this creation or that when there is no such thing as a creation at any time. All things exist in the all-containing spirit of God. Just as the whole body of water is contained in the universal ocean. But there is fluctuation in the waters owing to their fluidity. Whereas there is no motion in the quiet and motionless spirit of God. The light of the luminaries shines of itself, but not so the divine light. It is the nature of all lights to shine of themselves. But the light of Brahma is not visible to sight. As the waves of the ocean rise and fall in the body of its waters, so these phenomena appear as concepts in the mind of God as his ever varying thought. To men of little understanding, these thoughts of the divine mind appear as realities. They think this sort of creation will last for ages. What Vishishta is telling us here is something we can realize and understand in our own consciousness because we exist, but we do not exist as a fractal of the divine mind. The thoughts that are in the divine mind appear as realities. What that means is we are living we are apparently existing within a dream, within a collection of thoughts in the divine mind. We perceive this collection of thoughts, which we call the divine karmic traces, as something real. Just like we perceive when we're dreaming at night, body asleep. When our mind is not awake, but our mind is also 
engaging in the dreaming function, the dream appears to be real to us. And only when we wake up do we realize, oh, that was just a dream. Exactly like that. When we are able to maintain ourselves as the divine silent witness, it creates this sort of awakening to the reality that this whole universe is a dream a dream in our own mind. And we are the creator of this dream. Our mind is creating this dream from thoughts. And we know that thoughts arise from individual karmic traces. Thoughts arise from memories. And so as the creator of this universe, we have memories. Memories of what? Memories of something that we have experienced as real. Just like we might have memories of something we experienced as real in our human life. We have those same kinds of memories that we have experienced as real in our life as the creator of this universe. So where did those memories arrive? Are those real experiences that we remember? No. Just like the experiences that we have in this life, they appear to be real experiences to us as long as we are embedded in this life and not connected and established with the silent witness. Then our life appears real. As soon as we connect with the silent witness, we begin to have that glimmer of understanding that this life is as unreal as a dream. And then when we establish ourselves in that understanding, we realize that again, we are dreaming. And this world that we are dreaming and witnessing as, our, as the silent witness is based on memories of something else. Something we have experienced as real. In our case as the creator of this universe, our memories of our experiences in Goloka, the realm of Krishna, where we have a life and an existence that appears to be real as an eternal companion of Krishna.
But when we continue to maintain our connection with the silent witness, even in that situation of being a companion of Krishna, then that seeming reality fades into yet another illusion. And we have reached the end. The end of illusions. From that level of divine, supreme, silent witness, we are Shiva. We are pure consciousness. And then we realize, we awaken one more time to the reality that nothing exists. All is illusion. There is only pure consciousness. Now let us continue established in the silent witness. Observing the thoughts that are arising in our mind. And start the mantra. Let the mantra go, taking us deeper and deeper into the deepest level of consciousness where those thoughts arise to the source of thought. And there we see karmic traces, individual karmic traces or divine karmic traces. And when the mantra touches those karmic traces, they dissolve.
Jai Guru Dev. Thank you all for joining.